So uh, you need to be familiar with uh, terms and, and techniques, um, and technique terms. Uh, and I'll be showing y'all a bunch of stuff um, on some of my samplers just to kind of clarify, right? So number one, sampling. This is recording sounds to a sampler. It's taking any sound and digitizing it in a sampler, okay, of, of any kind. Uh, it could be a, a DAW on a computer, it could be a piece of hardware like an MPC or a SP1200 or anything like that. The next term is uh, programming. Um, now, there's different ways to think about this. You know, uh, the first step in programming is once you've sampled sounds and you've manipulated them, chopped them in bits and pieces, you assign them to pads, right? And on those pads, you can program those pads differently, meaning like you can pitch them all down so it sounds darker and slower. You can filter them so you just hear the bass part or just the higher part of them. Um, you can add effects to them, you can reverse them, right? So you take these sounds and then you assign them to the pads and then you assign what are called parameters to the pads, which are you know, EQs or different effects or you adjust the, um, the speed or the pitch or whatever, okay? And then it can also refer to how you play those pads and record them to what's called a sequencer, okay? But basically, um, you know, programming can be, you know, how you take a drum kick, a drum snare, and a hat, and how you play that all back, right? And, and after you've manipulated it and let, maybe put layered two drum kicks together, or a drum kick and a 808 snare, um, you know, and you play that back, that could also be considered programming. So uh, basically programming, the way you can think about it is how you, you've taken, you've sampled these sounds and how you break them up into smaller sounds and how you manipulate those sounds to make them sound different. Um, and then how you play those, you hit those pads um, back, you know. Um, swing is, is basically when you're programming sounds, mostly drums, um, there's something in, um, in all samplers and all DAWs called quantization. Um, and that is basically when you hit a pad, it snaps that sound or that note to a grid. Um, and it will land right on the grid, right? Meaning it sounds perfect. But it also can sound cold and robotic. So when someone plays the drums and they play the drums on beat but they're loose, they got swing, you know? Um, when someone plays drums, they sw they should swing because people can't quantize. You know, you know what I'm saying? How they play drums. Uh, so quantization, you know, can be very cold. So someone who has swing, you know, um, when they program their drums, they don't use quantization. They play them. They play them and record them into the sequencer, and they they're kind of loose. You know what I'm saying? Um, Quest Love, who talked about uh, Jay Dilla, said like you know he, th he you know Quest is a drum player says you know the way that Dilla programmed uh, drums and, and, and played drums was the, it, it sounded like a drunk baby played them uh, because you know they were so loose and they had so much uh, swing to them. Okay, so that's a real important term. Now you can uh, play when you record you hitting the pads and programming in the sequencer, you can have the quantization off, you can have it on when you record, you can have it on to a quarter note, eighth note, and sixteenth notes. And all that means is within the grid, you have more, more places. So sixteenth note will have uh, 16 places where you, where you hit that pad and that note will snap to essentially quarter notes it won't have much you you hit it it's just it's getting one two three four within a four bar loop and I'll, I'll show I'll show that so um, but what you can do is you can record with quantization on in a sampler and then you can um, you can add swing so it will play back uh, everything a little sloppy you know uh, bars and beats so almost all uh, all hip-hop songs are four four time signatures so one two three four 
you know, and that's a bar, right? Um, typically, in hip hop production, you'll find a snare hitting on the one, two. I mean, in, uh, on the two and four. So one, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. You know, so boom, 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 boom. Kind of like that. Now with trap, uh, sorry, I, I had to do that. Uh, with trap music, it, it, the snares fall on the three. So, um, you know, one, two, ch, four, two, two, ch, four, three, two, ch, four. You know, like like that. So it's a little little bit little bit different. But uh, with, with, with most hip hop beats, it's on the two and the, and the four when you're counting a bar where you'll you'll have the sna um, the snares hit. Uh, chopping. What is chopping? It's basically, you know, you sample a loop into your sampler and you chop it into into little bits and pieces into different 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 beats. So you could take a, you know, a four note sample and chop it into four um, four different notes. So it plays it plays back. You know, you, you have the four no notes. You could play it as a loop, or you could chop it in into half. You could chop it into quarters, whatever. Um, the important thing uh, that we'll talk about today is panning the stereo image. Now, panning is this. Basically, you got to understand what stereo and mono is. So up until the early 60s, everything was recorded in mono, meaning this. When you listen to something in mono, you have two speakers, left and right, let's just say, and you hear the drums or the vocals or the bass line evenly on the left and right. Okay, with stereo, it allows you to basically pan the drums over just to the left side. Pan the drums 80% to the left side. So you hear most of the drums on the left, you hear a little bit on the right. Uh, pan the vocals hard to the right, or pan the vocals 60% to the right. So you hear the vocals a little bit on the left and a little bit more on the right. Put, you know, it just basically allowed you to play stuff on the left or right or mix stuff part on the left and right with a little bit more on the right versus everything being even 100% hearing it the same on the left and right. So panning the stereo image meant this. If the drums are only in the left, the left side, let's just say, and the bass line is in the right side and you just want the drums, what you do is, is you basically, you sample that sample, and we'll go over an example of this with Paul C and the De Felice Trio, is that you, you basically then separate the two uh, tracks in the stereo image. So you, you are able to, by just, uh, you basically extract the left side um, and so you just have the drums playing clean, and then you uh, also extract the right side, which has the bass, and then you have the clean bass line, and then you can manipulate and chop and manipulate those samples separately, except for you know, when they're playing in the stereo image, if you just sample from the stereo image and you chop that up, you'd have the bass sounds and the drum sounds, you know, and they'd be playing, in, you know, hard pan left, hard pan right, whatever they are, and it would just sound different. Now when you, when, you, when you take the drums out of the stereo image from the left, it will then play back in mono. So you'll hear the snare evenly on the left and right, whereas before when it was in the stereo image you just heard it on the left speaker. When you pull it out of the stereo image, you hear it you know, theoretically even on the, on the left and right. And that's, that's kind of a really dope technique that Paul C, or C pioneered, um, you know, is, is that. Um, baseline filtering. What is baseline filtering? <laughs> this is basically you sample anything. And the example we'll use today uh, primarily will be uh, Pete Rock's use of, of um, today for They Reminisce Over You. You take, you sample a loop that has a, a clear bass line in it, but it has horns on it, guitar, whatever, some singing, whatever. And what you do is you apply what's called a low pass filter. And you, you manipulate it so that basically you take something that has all these different sounds in it that are high, high pitch sounds or you know, tre trebly sounds or mid range sounds and you, and you basically filter them out of the sound. So what you remain with is the bass line. Um, and it's a pretty prominent technique. 
um, that that's you know uh, sample based beat makers use. The other idea is layering, and layering is like this: like it's not necessarily um, you know layering like drums over a bass line over you know another type of sample. And I'll show an example of, of pretty much all these things. Um, is uh, layering is this like when I make a drum sound, I don't just sam necessarily just sample a kick in a snare. Um, I'll sample a kick in a snare and then maybe I'll add like another uh, drum snare to that snare. And maybe I'll add a uh, 808 clap to that and I'll mix them and I'll EQ them and I'll manipulate the levels um, of them. Maybe I'll delay them a little bit. I'll manipulate them so they make a totally unique, really textury sounding drum sound that's really punchy, really snappy um, versus just the snare it's, it's, itself. A lot of times too, uh, we'll pitch down um, snares and other and, and kicks and stuff. Um, you know, amongst you know, you always do that with your other your other samples or do it a lot of times. Um, uh, but you, you you know, you pitch down your snare to have it have a darker sound to it. And I'll just show some examples of that um, later, and y'all can watch those if you want, uh, if it's helpful. You know, or if you're a beat maker or want to be beat maker. And you want to just learn some some techniques that you can apply to your 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 skill set, because uh, you know I ain't the one to um, use you know uh, uh, drum packs and shit like that. You know I like to build my own drum drum packs essentially. So, and that's cool if you use that shit, you know, because it's just it's just another tool for you to have. But I like like to you know mold my own sculptures, so to speak, um, you know whatever.